So the old definition, so I believe if you took the underworld uh, contract as a course, then you actually the, the underworld contract as a course cover uh, instruction set up action is called ISA. And then I believe as you know about the ISA in this in this class. Right? So because the prerogative of this course is the on the original contract picture course. So, so actually the old definition of contract architecture is just instruction set architecture. So it means that uh, computer architecture just uh, uh, focused on uh, building efficient and then uh, efficient, efficient internet access for hardware and software. But uh, today, definition is much broader, so which means that computer architecture includes the many research targets and many research areas. Actually, the computer architecture research area is very large. So, it's just traditional definition, the hardware organization of computers. So, this includes the process architecture and then it also includes the computer system. Like how to how to organize the, the entire computer system. The computer architecture also includes the, the system search. And then how to build this is also related to the hardware, how to build computer. So it is related to <coughs> the computer architecture is related to the uh, computer hardware or computer system. And then it includes also IDA. So the present now the research area. But uh, recently, the computer architecture also includes them, some interfaces, and then system software, and then also framework, so like the machine learning framework. So, so it also includes the hardware area, also software area. And then also the, the computer architecture also uh, <coughs> includes the it's a research to the, some very new machines, such as the quantum computers. Uh, so the, it also <clears throat> so actually, the, uh, recently, the, the research area is very large. Uh, the problem is that <laughs> sometimes, uh, so, so when I uh, reviewed uh, some computer research paper, I can understand that some areas, so it's, it's very, it's very uh, broader. It's very, the, the research area is very broad. So and it's, it's the same for some other re reviewers. So sometimes I, can find I can find uh, some reviews such as uh, oh this is my area <laughs> so I can then understand uh, this paper. So okay so so I come to this slide so for my uh undergraduate computer architecture course the level. So actually uh, on, on the in the com undergraduate computer architecture course we learn uh, this topic performance, instruction set architecture, and then the command review. So and then this is a very important topic, the pipelining, and then memory hierarchy. So as we did, I believe three topics, the so IHA, pipelining, and memory hierarchy. So these topics are very important topics in the undergraduate computer architecture course. So I, あ、あ、이이 
sorry bang Bali nggak bisa ngapa pakai password tuh oke okay, topics are uh, very uh, very you know uh, research topics in computer architecture field but let's see the, some uh, recent uh, research topic in computer architecture so I just the uh, actually the, the session name session names of the micro two thousand twenty one. So you can find the, the many different topics on the program. So micro is the test tier of the program. So how far? So micro is the uh, top tier uh, computer architecture conference, and then I list the uh, special names, special names on this slide. So what can you find? So we can find uh, some unfamiliar names, actually. So in the previous slide, we can find uh, some topic names, such as uh, instruction set architecture, and then pipelining, that is the microprocess architecture and memory. But in the in the session name, so session uh, just collect some papers, research papers. So it includes the non-volatile memory, it's a kind of memory, right? It can be okay, but it's non-volatile. And then energy efficiency and no power, so it's okay. So because you can also focus on the cost of the computer system and security. Security is also a very uh, important topic in, in the in the on the computer architecture research. And then many researchers are also focused on the, some security issues and the security architecture uh, of the microprocessor architecture or GPUs. And then processing in or near memory. So it's a new topic, the parallelism, accelerators, and then reliability and notification, GPU. GPU is a new type of processor. Actually, GPU. So in the, in the, in the undergraduate course, we do not learn about the GPU, right? And microarchitecture. Oh, it's a very traditional topic, right? So I just added uh, some exclamation mark. Oh, what is this? Superconducting and quantum. And then sparse processing, graph processing, virtual memory. It's a kind of Memory memory system. So actually, we can find uh, some traditional topics such but only two two session names: microarchitecture and the virtual memory. So we can find uh, some new topics or new session names here. So it is because actually the old topics, old research topics are just old. So it is just it was uh. It was explored well. So uh, many researchers just uh, presented uh, some research results very well. So, and then they also, uh, researchers also investigate the new topics. Right? And also the computer, com you know, the computer fields change very quickly, right? So that's why the, the most, the recent computer architecture conference includes some new topics like this. And I, I also edited this slide the last night because this, <laughs> we are in 2024. So this is the authority uh, list of the HPCA 2024. We don't have uh, uh, last week, uh, no, previous week. So you can find uh, some uh, new New research, uh, new session name, new, new research topics. Security is okay. So security is also very uh, <laughs> important topic. As I mentioned, Lorema. So Lorema was also, it's the name of the session. So it means that from some papers, there, 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 there are several papers that uh, explore, explore, that explore Lorema. It's kind of a security issues in UN. Okay. 
So this is why I just said it's a low hammer here. And then read configurable architecture and FPG. HP. So it means FPG actually. Okay. And GNN, the so graph neural networks, GPU. So unfortunately, fortunately, so there, there, there is one GPU session. There was one GPU session. And then near memory processing, SSD. So storage. So storage was just uh, in. Uh, Studied by actually the first is the actually traditionally the, it's the research area of operating systems. But recently, many computer architects uh, focus on the research on the SSD like storage systems. Okay, so you can find the computational SSD that is a kind of in storage processing, and then also the pure SSD uh, research research topic. So. So there were two sessions in HPC about the SSD, a storage system, and then IoT and Edge accelerators. It's also kind of new, but it's not it's not new recently. And then microarchitecture. Oh, I found the term traditional topic name microarchitecture and cache and memory system. It's also a traditional research topic. And data center also computer architecture also includes the data center and then network. Okay. So emerging and ENN and train. So recently the research topics are changing. So it means the, the researchers are focusing on new topics, new research topics such as this. So so just a trend. <laughs> so some, so that's why. Right. So even though we uh, study uh, some this traditional uh, topics such as the IFA, the pipelining, and then memory hierarchy in the undergraduate computer architecture course, but in the in the uh, graduate level, we we can focus on topics such as like this. Such as this. So, like this. So, 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 that's why we need to focus on the, some papers published in uh, top tier conferences. Okay. So, changing. Okay. So, I think, I think this is the top tier of uh, uh, figures. Uh, if, we, if we took the, uh, <laughs> actually, it's, it's definitely a search for. Okay, so so this figure uh, represents uh, some layers uh, of the computer system on the computer system. So actually, in order to build an uh, entire computer system, uh, we need to know the knowledge on uh, many different topics. Actually, so it is because a computer system is a product of electric devices. So and then also, it's the product the computer processors. Computer processors are the product of semiconductor technology. So that means that in order to build, then we need to know about the some the semiconductor and then and then actually the, the electric electronic physics. But because the abstraction. So we don't actually we cannot we cannot explore all layers of computer systems, right? Because this is very complex. And then also it's very difficult. We cannot study uh, all all uh, all kind of knowledge very well. So we need to focus on a certain layer. And then computer architecture actually traditionally focuses on the architecture layers or micro architecture layer. But so recently, but we can just expand the, some research areas to the these upper layers like the. Operating system or well, system software also on the, the lower layers, such as the some logic bits or well, some semiconductor technology, quantum, something like this. So we can explore some several layers in the computer system, but we need to focus. So actually, this is very broad, so we cannot know about 
all, all knowledge on these several layers. So we need to focus on a certain layer, okay? So abstract, so hiding details when they aren't in focus. We just focus on a certain layer, okay? So this video also shows the layers of control system. It's uh, so I, I just copied the, this video from the uh, textbook, okay? So, and then, so it, then usually we can just divide the computer systems as a software and hardware. And then someone thinks that uh, computer architecture is in the hardware area. So it's not good. The computer architecture is just located between hardware and software. So it means that computer architecture also includes the hardware graphics and software graphics. It's very broad. So we need to know the broad knowledge in order to uh, working on, in order to work on the computer architecture research. Okay. So you try, as I mentioned, traditionally computer architecture covers the instruction set architecture and then the control system organization. Okay. So what is the role of com the computer architecture? Computer architecture researchers are called an architect, 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 okay? So what is the role? To make design products with of course hardware software interface. So that's why we need to know about the hardware. We need to know about the software also. Okay. So sometimes it's not easy, easy to know about the hardware and software both, but it's okay. It's, a, it's, it's funny and then interesting. Okay. And then for what? To meet functions. So it work in the, the computer systems need to work well and they need to work correctly. So meet the function and then performance. Performance is the number one interest of the customers. So we need to build a better computer system. So we means that the computer systems with high performance, higher performance, and then cost. So as an engine, engineering researchers, so they also need to focus on, we need to focus on cost, cost of the computer, cost of the system. So computer architects, to make design, trade off cost hardware and software. So we need to know hardware, we need to know software. And then with functional performance and cost. Okay. Okay, this is just uh, the definition of a computer architecture, and then just just introduction <laughs> introduction. Okay, so components of a uh, computer system. So this is a uh, kind of uh, introductory lesson. Uh, so this is this is the architecture of a personal computer. And then I think I add uh, this this one a little bit old. So why? So this figure shows the the organization, organization of a, a computer system. So why why is it old? What is different from the current system, the modern system? More than that. So this is CPU. So this is CPU. And this is what is this? It's an object cache. Why cache is off chip? So cache is in this is in the, in the inside of the CPU, right? So you know the error cache, and error cache is in the core, and this is in the, in the, in the, in the core. So the entry cache, it's a, it's a, a shared cache. Shared cache is also inside of a chip. All right. But you can find the off chip cache here, so which means that very old computer the, in the, in the very old CPU, the cache was is cache was cache was external. So it means that it is outside of the CPU. So 
Actually, I just I I work for Intel the first time for um, about the four nine months, but I was so I I had a chance to uh, work with uh, their simulator, right? Some CPU simulator, but I found that <laughs> in their simulator, I found the L two cache, but L two cache is is connected via some external bus. It's not, it's not true, right? But actually they used the very, so actually they developed the very CPU simulators from the very old, for a very long time. And then actually they built old, old CPU, the cheap ones in the, in the outside, is one outside of the CPU. So that's why, like, the cache, cache is called the external, it's, it's connected via external bus, so it's not true, right? But they developed the uh, simulators from the very, very first one, the very old one, okay? Also, what is different? No switching. So what is no switching? And then in this figure, you can find that, oh, GPU is connected via North Bridge chip. Also, the main memory is connected via North Bridge chip. Is it true? So actually, uh, if you uh, have you ever assembled the computer, desktop computers, how many students? Have you ever assembled the desktop computer? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay. okay. Mm, that's the problem. The problem. The computer. Yeah, that's that. So, I was just going to start with the computer. Yeah. 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 어쨌든 컴퓨터를 이제 좀 하드웨어 관심 있는 사람들은 조립하고 하긴 하는데 옛날에는 조립하는 게좀 많이 하고 했어 해가지고 <웃음> 딱 보면은 이제 아 이거 새끼 생겼구나 알 수가 있는데 쉽지 않네요. 그럼 뭐 저는 이제 뭐 컴퓨터 뭐 하드 하드웨어 하는 사람이니까 관심 있을 수 있는데 음, 일단. 그러니까 사실은 옛날에는 굉장히 이제 불편하잖아요. 뭐 유튜브가 있나 아니면 뭐 데스크탑 컴퓨터도 다 스스로 조립했고 그 다음에 뭐 리눅스도 진짜 맨땅에 헤딩하면서 그냥 <웃음> 컴퓨터 날리면서 막 깔고 그랬는데 그러면서 이제 좀 배운 게 많이 있는 것 같긴 해요. 오케이? 또 North bridge, it's different. Actually, in the modern computer system, the main memory is directly connected to CPU. Also, GPU, so GPU is also directly, con GPU is connected to the PCI bus, but GPU connection is directly managed by CPU. Okay, so this part is different. So you can say that, Currently, North Bridge Park, it was a chip in the previous uh, generation, but North Bridge Park is included in the CPU, CPU chip. So, in the old CPU, the CPU just includes the, this, this part, the core and shared cache, and there was the first one in the, yeah. The outside of on the outside of the CPU, and then CPU is connected to the North Bridge, and then North Bridge control the data movement between the RAM and then GPU, and then so the, and also data is managed to the data, North Bridge just manage the data movement between the CPU and some other parts. But the current system, the modern system. This part, 
is included in the uh, single CPU chip. That so it means the CPU includes the memory controller and then also CPU controls the, some data movement between GPU. Why? What's the reason? GPU memory. What's the reason? Why? Why CPU directly manages the data movement between GRAM and GPU? Why those bridge part? This part is included in the CPU now. Performance. For what? Bandwidth. So, recently, the data bandwidth is a very big part, right? And then GPU and then DRAM, you know, the DRAM bandwidth is very critical for the performance of computer system. And then GPU is also very critical. So GPU also requires maybe high bandwidth, high data bandwidth between CPU and then main memory. So GPU is also directly controlled by CPU. Okay. So CPU needs to be fast, memory needs to be fast. So these fast components are located near CPU or core. In the other part, so based on the PCI force and then some other IO forces, then disk network and then IO devices are connected. So you can find the South Bridge chip. So actually this is the main mode chip of the current CPU. Then why did devices are connected to the South Bridge chip? Because it's slow. These devices are slow. So the CPU, so we, we don't need to locate the these devices near CPU. So slow devices, devices are located far from the CPU. Okay. And then just the devices are located near CPU, close to CPU. So this is the somewhat hierarchical organization of a control system. Okay. So this is the, the modern PCI architecture. So I just, uh, oh, so you can find that this, actually I copied the, uh, this figure from the Intel G390 chipset uh, specification. So what is, G390 chipset is the main board chipset of, for the PC, it's a personal computer. So as you can see, so the CPU, CPU is here, and then you can find that DRAM and GPU are directly connected to CPU. So it means that the North Bridge part is integrated in, in the CPU, okay, right? Because we require fast operation, well, high bandwidth. And then you can find the main board chipset here, and then it's a G390. And then also you can find the, some many helpers, but these IO devices are low, lower than the RAM, and then we don't require high data bandwidth. So that's why these IO devices are connected via main board chipset. Okay, that's how the computer systems are organized. Okay. So the principle is for well, if we just require a uh, test operation well high data bandwidth, then it is located near processor, right? Like a CPU. But if we do not require test operation, it like, means a slow operation. So if we just uh, okay with the slow operation and then lower data bandwidth, then those devices are located far from CPU or processor. So we can just organize the computer systems hierarchically like this. So this is the, the 
G690 chipset. It's a modern, the uh, more recent uh, chipset. So you can in DDR5, but the architecture is uh, nearly the same. But the DDR5 is connected, and then GPU is also connected. And then, uh, where is the PC? Okay. So it's very similar. So, so this is the um, uh, cup the organization of the personal computer system. So, and then you can just connect the multiple CPUs or multiple processes via yeah, interconnection network. So, so what is this? So, this is the some uh, high end parallel the architecture of the high end parallel system. So, what is the default? So you can find the, 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 the cache. This is the cache, and this is the memory, and this is the processor. Okay, so you can find the, the some alphabet here. And so actually, this is the some independent uh, system. So it means uh, there, there is a processor, there is a cache, and then main memory is connected. And these systems are connected via interconnection network, right? And then so like here and here. And then also this system is connected to the live host. Okay. So, so actually it's a little bit uh, different, but we can say that this uh system is NUMA system. Why what, what is NUMA? So non-uniform memory architecture. Non-uniform memory. Why? Because memory is here, memory is here, and memory is here, then this processor can request the data from uh near memory, so, so they, they its own memory, or it can request the data from the far memory. So it's, that's why it's called the non-uniform. So we can just build a system like this for the high the high performance server system. So high performance server system requires the many processors, right? And then in order to connect the many processors and then their memory system, then we can just organize the computer system like the NUMA. The non-uniform memory application. So, what the, what's the research topic in this NUMA system? The memory access latency is different. So, the, the, if the data is found in the near memory, then we can access this data very quickly. But if data is data is found in the far memory, then it will take very long time. If the data movement cost is very high, then performance will be degraded. So in the NUMA, NUMA system, the data organization, data organization or data management is the, the very important research topic. So this figure shows the, the modern high end. So it's a server computer system. So in the server computer system, you can find the, you can find you can find that in the server main board we can equip multiple CPUs, right? So if you just uh, open the, the server server computer, then server main board on the server server main board we can equip multiple CPUs, and then also the DRAMs are connected to the. CPU. So it is because, so as I mentioned, the memory controller is included in the CPU, right? So their own DRAM is connected to the each CPU, and then there is an interconnection network between CPUs right here. So it's also kind of a NUMA model, right? It's a NUMA because the data can be here or it can be here. So for this. 
the four CPU system, the also data can be here and here. And then data, uh, data is changed between, exchanged between the, the CPU using the CPU bus, the, the in, Intel uh, high bandwidth bus. So this is the uh, um, copper loss of the high end server complex system. So you can find how the CPUs are connected. So in the, in the two CPU system, it's very simple. Four CPU, it's directly connected. But in the A CPU system, it's a little bit uh, complex, okay? The topology is a little bit different. Okay, now so let's focus on the single CPU so, and then the technology trend in the uh, single CPU architecture. So as, we, so as I mentioned, uh, the performance, performance and cost of uh, CPUs uh, is highly influenced by semiconductor technology. So what is this? This graph shows the, the clock rate of the CPU by year, okay? So, uh, actually, I copied the, this graph from the textbook. So, this line, this line shows the actual clock frequency. So you can find that uh, in this period, the clock frequency is increased dramatically, right? So, and then this, you know, this dash line is just the exponential of 1.49, so really 1.5. So. It means that actually until until this point, the clock frequency is increased exponentially, and then the rate exponential rate is one point nearly five, one point five. So it's it, it's crazy actually, right? But at some point. Now around the early 2000, we can notice that the clock frequency is saturated. So why? Coarser the limit. Yeah, coarser the limit. We're cold in this part. So, more critical issue, no? mm -hmm. oh, oh. So, <clears throat> so we will uh, learn about the, some power consumption of the processor, and but I believe that. Actually, some students need to know. So what is the equation of the power consumption, dynamic power consumption? What is the equation? T equal, not equal, actually. It's proportional to alpha, alpha, alpha is the activity factor, C, D, shell. F. So this is the uh, dynamic power consumption equation. Okay. So alpha is uh, related to the activity, activity of a, a circuit, like the, some changes of values, like one and between one and zero. C is the capacitance. It's related to the area of a circuit. B supply voltage at is the frequency. So oh, you can find oh the power consumption is proportional to the F, just there. But actually, in order to increase the F, then we need to increase the voltage. So actually the supply voltage is also proportional to the F. So it means that the dynamic power, dynamic power is proportional to the F Q. Power of three. So 
Actually, the most direct way to increase the performance of CPU is to increase the clock frequency. Right. Because if the clock frequency is increased, then the processor can execute the instructions very quickly. Right? Actually, in the same time, the processor can receive more instructions. Right. But power, power is very also very critical. So if we just increase the app like this, then our computer may require nuclear loop. Okay. So it's not possible. But actually the is we can say that 1.19 cover. So this is the some trend of the semiconductor technology. So it means that uh, if we just uh, use the, some modern semiconductor technology, then we can increase the clock uh, frequency by so exponentially by 1.19. But we can observe that it was 1.49. So it is because of enhanced in computer architecture. So we can just increase the, the speed of the pipeline. Also, we can also improve the, some architecture, the microprocessor architecture in the CPU. So we can increase the clock frequency like this amount of the exponential of 1.49. So this is the technology trend, it's a 1.19, okay? But it's, it's saturated. So recently, uh, you know, the result is that if the uh, CPU can run with the uh, five gigahertz uh, clock frequency, right? But I think it's amazing, but you know, the modern Intel CPUs is actually require very uh, high power consumption, right? It's P PDP is very high actually. So it was around the 55 or, or uh, around the 100 watt in the, pre in the previous generation. <laughs> exactly, the PDP is so high. So in order to increase the clock frequency, the Intel, Intel just uh, increased the PDP, so a lot of power for CPU. So, so uh, recently, uh, the modern CPUs uh, require very high-end cooling system, and it's it, it is also the heat, the heat of the uh, chip, the heat dissipation, dissipation is related to the power consumption. So GPU, GPU is also the same. GPU requires a high-end cooling system, right? Is it because the GPU power, the power consumption is also very high. So actually, power is very critical in the process architecture, which related the heat or temperature, also it's related the cost, then also it's related to the some running cost and manufacturing cost. So it's it critical if the chip chip consume high higher power much uh, higher power, then we need to use the better pitch. Yes. And then also the better cooling system. That's why it's a related, also it is related to the manufacturing cost. And then, uh, so it's a related to the mode low. The mode, you know, the mode low is a very popular low. And then you can, in this graph, you can find the uh, number of transistors here, and then you can find the some feature size of a single transistor by year. So if you, as you know, so this is the low scale, the y-axis, not this one. This is the low scale. So you can find that the number of transistors in a chip is also increased exponentially. It's a most low, right? So this is just a trend. So this is if the number of transistors increased by most low, 
it could be 100 billion in 2021. So it's a cost that the book is published in the, the, around the 2000, 2012 or 2013. <laughs> it's just the expectation of the book. But now we are in 2024. The feature size is reduced by 30% every process. The half size every five years. The size is reduced. So we can include more transistors in the same area. 100 billion transistors are now okay. So let's see. So so this is the uh, dipolo of the, the NVIDIA A102. Okay, it's a, a uh, the server side GPU, and then the, it's a kind of a uh, cutting edge GPU. So we can find that in the, in the, in the NVIDIA A102, the number of transistors is the 76 billion transistors. Okay, so still not 100, okay. Still at 100 billion. So actually, the most low, the most low is actually only. So the I believe the the most low is the is the two number of transistors doubles every two years. Okay, mm -hmm. still. So this is just uh some empirical low, and then actually that is the goal of the semiconductor vendors like Intel and some other vendors. But so recently, so recently, it's very, very difficult to reduce the size of a transistor. So currently, it's three nanometer by PSMC, but the cost is very high because of low yield. So Samsung is trying to develop the two nanometer or three nanometer, I don't know, but I think it's, it's not easy. Cause of low yield, 수요, 수익이 낮아서 뭐 토지 엄청나게 올라가고 뭐, 뭐, 만들 수는 있겠지만 결국에는 코스트 문제가 있거든요. 그래서 일드가 좀 나와줘야 되는데 이게 쉽지가 않지 않을까. 뭐 계속해서 이제 발전을 하고 있지만 어느 순간 가서는 쉽지 않은. 뭐 그래도 이제 예상 어떻게 하면 이제 좀더 이제 좋은 칩을 하겠다. 열심히 하고 있긴 합니다. 네. 근데 this is very crazy chip. It's so actually this is the uh wafer scale chip. So crazy actually. The 1.2 trillion transistors in wafer scale engine. So that it was that it was. Uh, wafer scale engine it includes the 1.2 trillion but as you can see the area is very large okay so most of the just mentioned the, the same area like the cpu cpu size or g not gp because the more of them just to <laughs> it was t was a uh, c, 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 u, c, q, c u of the intel so it, the, he just focused on the, the cpu chip So 1.2 trillion, the crazy number, but also the size is very large. And then problem is that if the chip size is very large, because of yield, yield is, can be very low. So you read, so the quality will be also very high. So most low, like this, but recently, the uh, single thread performance. So single thread performance is saturated. So, so this is the kind of awesome old data until the 2008, 2015, right? And then you can find that the most low is continuing, but recently the most low is ending. So the, the technology is changing, okay? So it can be like this. Then actually the performance of a single thread is saturated. Okay. 
and then also the frequency is saturated, and then TDP is saturated, but the currently it is increasing ridiculously, and then number of logical cores is increasing because at this point we change it to the multi-core era, the multi-core architecture. So it means that in a single chip, a single chip influences the multiple cores. Okay. Okay, so I will introduce about uh, some uh, trend report of the semiconductor technology. So it is called the uh, ITRS, the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors. So ITRS provides roadmap and then technology projection for the semiconductor technology. And then it was uh, uh, published by some semiconductor vendors such as uh, the semiconductor vendors in US, uh, Taiwan, and South Korea. So, you know, South Korea is a very uh, <clears throat> a strong company, a strong patient in the semiconductor industry. Okay. So, actually, so when I was a uh, uh, PhD student, I also uh, Report the ITS report, but ITRS ITRS is no longer being updated. So the 2017 report is not updated anymore. It is changed to the IRDS. IRDS. So it is called the International Roadmap for Devices and Systems, and then. We can just read the some projection of CMOS technology in the more more section. More more section. So why is this important? So we need to know the technology trend of the semiconductor technology. So it is because, as I mentioned, the semiconductor technology is highly lit in semiconductor technology. Highly influences CPU performance, CPU or GPU performance and cost. So that's why we need to focus on the trend of a semiconductor technology. So the projection is also important. So we can just project some future technology. So it's not easy, I, I know, but then the future can be changed and then the trend can be changed, but it is just published by some very uh, popular uh, report, like IRDS or I, ITRS. So we can just project the, some trend of the semiconductor technology to use the, this report, IRDS. And then we can, for the CMOS technology, then we can just refer more and more section. More and more. Okay. And then, so, <clears throat> the memory system. So memory system is also very critical for the performance of system, uh, computer system. So this is because we need to move, we need to transfer data from memory to process a core. And it will take very time, long time. And then this long time is called the data movement cost. So, so in the in the modern computer system, data movement cost is extremely crit critical. Okay. So that's why many researchers are focusing on near or in memory processing because of this uh, data movement cost. Now we cannot use the ideal memory because the ideal memory is a big, fast, and cheap. There is no ideal thing in this real world. So we can just, we cannot use this type of memory. So, so you know, because we cannot use the ideal memory, we just build the memory hierarchy, right? And then we just, memory hierarchy relies on uh, low quality, the data low quality observed in on application. So, data locality is the characteristics of 
a certain type of application actually what usually usually you can uh, find the strong temporal or special locality in the normal applications but it may not be true for a certain type of application such as the graph application the graph analytics big data analytics so the locality may not be strong data locality may, may, may not be observed so in this case we can use the a different type, different architecture of memory hierarchy. So this is very important. So we can use the memory hierarchy, but memory hierarchy like the cache, and then cache is actually automatically managed by hardware. So it's in the area of the um, architectural state, the architectural state means that the state can be changed by ISA instructions defined by ISA, but cache is not the area of architectural state. It is automatically managed by hardware. So. Efficient management of memory hierarchy is a key for the memory performance of memory system. So this type of research is also very popular in the computer architecture field. So just to put it inside, but it's outdated. It's so it can be different. So, so because we cannot use the idea of memory, then we just build a memory hierarchy like this. So this is also a very important topic in the uh, undergraduate computer architecture course. So memory wall. What is memory wall? So memory wall is the performance gap between memory and processor, right? The processor is very fast and memory is slow. Compared to the processor. Okay, so this is called the memory wall. And then, memory, because of the memory wall, the performance of the computer system is restricted. Okay, so memory wall is defined by memory cycle divided by processor cycle. And then it was four, but it is 200 in 2002. So that's why the cache, cache hierarchy is critical for the performance because of memory wall. But actually it was increased very exponentially, the memory wall, but it is now saturated or it's reduced. Okay. And then recently, the important factor is the bandwidth rather than latency. The memory bandwidth gets more critical. Okay. The bandwidth. Disk. Disk performance and density is also improved, but the recently we used SSD, the solid state drive, and the flash memory as the media of the storage device. So actually, you know, the disk is very slow, hard to drive, and then it's a, a millisecond uh, level. So, okay, so that's why the, the disk, like the, some uh, page, like disk access is actually managed by the artificial because the hard disk drive is very slow. It's, it's kind of some in the operating in the it, it, is, it works with the interface operation, and then uh, the operating system manages the, the disk operation. But nowadays, we use the flash memory, and we can use the SSD. So SSD is a, it's a around a thousand times lower than the RAM, but it is very fast. It's, a, it's a faster than hard disk drive. Okay, so sometimes we can just uh, 
apply the default approaches to the SSD. So as I said, the SSD used the flash. It is called the flash because it's very fast. Just flash memory is very fast. It is because the flash memory is much faster than hard disk drive. Then we can also consider the networks, so like the on-chip network, then the system interconnection, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So on-chip interconnection is also can be critical because inside of a single chip, there can be many cores, and many cores and some uh, components are connected via interconnected network. So interconnected network performance can be also critical for the performance of the entire system. And then system interconnection. Network is currently, the network is also very critical, so you know. So large AI model, so hyper, hyper scale AI model uh, actually uh, requires very high end server system connected via network. So that's why the network performance is also critical to them. And then some researchers also focus on the, some network-based accelerator, not to handle the, some system degradation by the network issues. And so some researchers focus on the, some processing in network, kind of the network-based so processing can be the, the network, network kind of. But Usually, traditionally, network is the very low level because it's a low, it's a slower, it's a slower than the disk. Okay? So traditionally, the network is a very low level, so data movement level. But recently, because some AI, AI model require a high-end computer system connected by network. Network, the criticality is also increasing. Okay, we can just define some, this one, but this is still the, some area of network research area. Thank you. So again, here, so I just ex explained about some components of the computer system and then uh, research trend on the, and the technology trend. Uh, I, so I will just cover this one in the later, in the next class. Okay, so I will stop here. Any question? Okay, so thank you for uh, listening. See you in the next class.